Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Spotlight on the Hotel Guest On-Site Experience, brought to you by Stay in Touch, Trust You, and Fuel. I'm your host, Free Gola, and I'm joined by my panel of hospitality tech leaders. First up is founder and CEO of Stay in Touch, Yas Shop. Yas has a 20-plus year track record in hotel software technology. He began Stay in Touch with a vision of reinventing inventing the hotel PMS technology, making it simple, mobile, and transitioning the software to the cloud. Prior to Stay in Touch, Yas spent 17 years at Microsystem Inc., now Oracle Hospitality, as a senior vice president in charge of global product development and strategy for the lodging and e-commerce divisions. During his tenure, Micro's hospitality products began the global market leader, growing the company's revenue from less than $300 million to $1.1 billion. Joining us from Trust You is Senior Director of Marketing, Valerie. Valerie has over seven years of experience in marketing for hospitality solutions. Currently, she leads the marketing team at Trust You, where she is responsible for all content, customer, and product marketing efforts. Valerie posts weekly to Trust You's hotel management blog, where she shares tips and best practices for an effective hotel marketing strategy. Previously, she worked in product marketing at Cvent, an industry-leading event solutions provider for event planners and hoteliers. And rounding out our panel is COO of Fuel, Stuart Butler. Stuart is responsible for directing direct booking strategies for hundreds of hotels worldwide. With a degree in physics with space science and systems, uh, and a background as a cold fusion programmer and a project manager, Stuart takes a solutions-minded and innovative approach to everyday marketing challenges. He is also the host of the industry's number one weekly marketing podcast, the Fuel Hotel Marketing Podcast. So I want to welcome our panel and I'll run through the agenda and we will get started. We'll begin by discussing the preferred communication method of today's guest. Our panel will then discuss how giving guests a choice in service empowers your staff and guests, the correlation between messaging and guest satisfaction, and how to increase your hotel ratings while driving more revenue. And finally, our panel will leave you with a few pointers on how to leverage technology to enhance the hotel guest on-stay experience. We'll then turn it over to the audience for questions and comments. So let's get started. And before we get to our first discussion point, I want to launch two quick polls. The audience, I'd like you guys to participate in. The first being, oh, all right, so that one already closed. Uh, the question actually is, does your hotel have a strategy in place to leverage technology technology to enhance the guest on-site experience. And if you didn't get a chance to, to uh, select or, or vote on that one, you can go ahead and send in your answer via comment, via the comment box. So, and I'll read it off. All right, so 63% say yes, 25% say somewhat, 13% say not really, uh, and no one said not at all. All right, I'm going to launch the next poll now. What are the biggest pain points for choosing any technology platform? Price, integrations, concerns about cloud reliability, training and implementation, or security, and feel free to select any that apply. Give you guys about 25 more seconds here.
All right, I am closing the poll now and sharing the results. What are the biggest pain points for choosing any technology platform? 59% of you said price, 50% said integrations, 13% said concerns about cloud reliability, and 44% said training and implementation, and 22% of you said security. So all very legitimate concerns and something that each one of our presenters are going to address during this presentation. So with that said, let's go on to our first discussion point. Some key data points. Let me first hide the results. Some key data points for you guys to take note of uh, before we launch into our uh, presenter slides. The preferred communication method of today's guests. The majority of guests, 80% that is, expect hotels to initiate contact after a hotel booking. Guests are significantly more likely to have a better communication experience when communicating through text messages and on social media. The standard of great service has evolved and 72% of consumers have a more positive view of a company if it provides a mobile service experience, according to a Gartner report. And mobile communication is an unprecedented opportunity for the hospitality industry. Never before have we been able to have real-time communication with guests during the entirety of this day. So again, this really goes or speaks to the importance of mobile technology um, within the guest experience and how you can leverage that. And with that said, I'm going to turn it over to our first presenter, Yashap, who's going to speak about how giving your guests a choice in service empowers your staff and your guest. Yas? Thanks, Ray. Good morning, everybody. Um, Ray, next slide, please. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, starting with, I think, the, the, the service concepts that are changing. Uh, I'm going to use an example. I'm actually on a short vacation currently, and I'm staying in an Airbnb, um, which I think you know many of the hoteliers are trying to look and see how they can deal with, uh, with a service like that. What's the great advantage of a Airbnb services, if you guys have experienced it, is that it's basically a hotel uh, with the luxury and the convenience of your home home around you. I mean, I'm staying in a, ho in a house here, two-bedroom house with a kitchen. It's Everything is fully organized. There is shampoo. There is towels. It's like a hotel room, but it's larger. It's bigger. I got free parking on the driveway. And I'm very close to many restaurants and many other places that I can go to to enjoy things that I would normally do in a hotel. But I think what's really key and important for me is that the way you book an Airbnb is very much up to date and the way I think people want to be dealt with and, and booking or handling while on site communication with the owners, less, uh, let's call it the Airbnb manager. Uh, it's all done through mobile. It's all done on the mobile phone. I mean, I could do it on my desktop, but that technically I book it on my mobile phone. If I have a question, I can text the, the owner of the Airbnb immediately. I can get a response immediately. If I want something, I text it and it gets arranged if it's within the service. It's basically a very free and uh, open, but also a very um, personal service, in my opinion, because it's, it's direct, it's immediate, and it's the way I want to be serviced. If you look at the, uh, the slide also here, you see a couple of different ways uh, where guests are interacting with staff or staff are interacting with guests. Of course, the first one, uh, probably the oldest one, uh, when Apple started its app, Apple stores, uh, you know, about 10 years ago, uh, there were no front desk, there were no checkout lines, no check-in lines. It was all done in, anywhere in the, in, the, in the shop. You could basically buy what you wanted, pay there, and move on. And you can see some samples here on the right where a guest is being checked in by a staff member using a tablet. The back end of it has a device which allows to create a mobile key as well as to do the payment. Then the third guest is driving probably to the hotel, checking himself in on a smartphone, and the fourth guest is arriving at the hotel and is using a self-service station uh, to either pick up a key when he has done the mobile check-in or uh, maybe checking in uh, himself there in the lobby without having to wait in line. Um, so I think, you know, when it, with all these changing things and all these expectations, the guest no longer considers personal service service actually physically in person, but personal service is very much associated with devices and digital interaction between hotel and guests. Um, <clears throat> guests associate simple good service with flexibility and convenience. It's got to be in person, it can be in mobile, or it has to be self-service. All three of them are really important. Uh, for today's guests, and I think hoteliers need to really 
take uh, take take advantage of that. Next slide, please. So changes in the guest's expectation. You can see some of the research data here on the right. Uh, you know, every guest wants to be treated as a VIP. Everybody today wants immediate gratis gratification. You know, it used to be that you had to wait for days to learn something new that happened in the world. Now it's basically, you know, notification on your smartphone. You know exactly what's going on if that's what you want to know. So, and the same I think applies in hotels. People don't want to wait anymore. They want to have service right away. They want to have an answer right away. And they want to also be in control of the conversation. You know, they don't, they don't want to have you manage the entire check-in experience. They want to be able to do it themselves. They want to ask questions while on site. <clears throat> Guests will also decide which way they want to communicate with, with you. You know, it, it might be that they pick up the phone, but, you know, who uses the phone in the hotel room these days? And if, if there was texting available, and I'm sure Trust You, Valerie, will talk about that later on in this webinar, probably a lot of the... Hotel, a lot of the staff guests would use uh, texting to communicate with with the hotel staff. I was recently at a hotel in Naples where they implemented um, actually Trust You, and they were actually very pleased. I was asking the hotel, how how does it work for you? Does it does it give you a lot of extra work? Do you have to reorganize your your operations a little bit around it? And they, they did. They had to make some change in our operations, but they're getting great feedback from customers about uh, you know the speed of service, about the easiness. Uh, it's used for simple questions that need to be answered, and it's much faster and simpler than just pick, having to pick up the phone. People are also unique, and they want to be treated as that. And I think if going back to Airbnb, that's a clear example of where you can be unique, because there are so many different places you can stay in that are very different than from, you know, from a standard hotel, that if you want to be different, you can you can you know, have a different experience. Uh, and and I think hotels need to think about that as well, especially as it relates to service, service, and service. What I mean with that, again, that can be through digital information, it can be through a device, it can be in person, or a combination, I think, of all of them is, I think, what really people want. You want to have a choice of service available at any given time. Next slide, please. So why do hotels need to take action? Now, of course, there there is Airbnb, and I think Airbnb is you know it's another channel where people can book places to stay. But you know if it's doing what it keeps on doing, it may also take away some of the components from a hotel. It may take away some business from a hotel. Concur, as you may know, is a travel experience company, travel expense company that also has a booking tool for corporate. Concur has added the offerings of Airbnb to its corporate travel component. So now, people that are going on business uh, can also stay in Airbnb and take advantage of travel expense systems that are used by their organization. So that's another thing that you need to be aware of that goes out on there. So it's, it's important that you find uh, your ways and that you create your own identity in around the hotel and make sure that guests are aware of, of the, these components. <clears throat> guests are fickle and need to find a reason to return. So you need to give them something that wows them that keeps them interested. Um, if I look at some of the hotels where we have installed our self-service component in Amsterdam, uh, I went, recently I went through the TripAdvisor reviews of, the, of some of those hotels looking to see how guests would respond to the self-service check-in component and I noticed in very many of these reviews uh, that the guest was actually saying very nice and easy check-in experience, very convenient. The staff member no longer was taking you know, the order, so to speak, and checking me in or checking me out, but really helped me around and while I was very quickly being able to check myself in. So a very good way of making a difference than, you know, for example, compared to another standard hotel. <clears throat> There's obviously OTAs and very big brands that have lots of marketing opportunities for, for them to get, to, to get guests to come back to the hotels at any given time. Next slide, please. Why should, why should you offer guests a choice of service? I think I mentioned quite a few of these things already in the past few slides, but you know, IHG recently did a report called the H of I. Um, you know, I want to do it myself. I want to do it for me. I want to be able to be in control at any given time. If you look at the front desk, you see many of the brands today looking at ways to remove the front desk from the lobby. There's a few hotels right now that don't have front desks anymore. Some of the small, you know, some of the larger brands have now, you know, courtyards and other hotels have very small desks or pods basically from where, where, where somebody's checked in or checked out. So they're trying to refocus how a lobby should look and how you should interact with the guest. 
um, you know, a tablet obviously brings a guest, brings you closer to a guest. You remove the wall of the front desk. Um, if you have mobile check-in as a service, then all of the administrative actions of the actual check-in are done by the guest him or herself without them actually being bothered by doing that. Um, it's much more it's much more instant to uh, to interact with the guest without having that uh, front desk in the middle. And you know, so from our database, if we look at our clients, for example, that have implemented our self-service solutions next to this traditional way of checking in, we see that many of those hotels, the guests are actually picking up to 66% self-service check-in options, which could be either mobile through checking in through mobile phone or using some of the self-service station at, at the lobby to check themselves in or out. And 66% is quite a large volume. That's not something I was expecting when I did some of these statistics on our database, but it's clear that guests, uh, and again, we also referring back to the TripAdvisor reviews from these hotels, guests are into doing it themselves if they want to and if they can to. So you gotta rethink really a little bit more mobile PMS and make sure that you bring guests and staff closer together. Next slide, please. Streamlining the guest and arrival check-in experience. Um, I think you really have to, uh, you know, before the guest gets in the hotel, into the hotel, and, and when the guest checks out, those are really the two points where you have most of the interaction with your guests. That's where you can make a difference, whether it's a digital difference or whether it's an in-person difference. You have to make sure you offer the opportunities. Um, you know, you can also use these digital opportunities to offer early check-in, room upsell, you can upsell packages all through a digital device because that digital device doesn't, this does not have a bad day, you know, it basically tells the guest what it needs to tell the guest and it tries to sell the guest what the guest wants to buy by showing a nice picture, showing some nice text around it, making the whole process of personalization and upselling a lot easier, also less disruptive and le less awkward for staff members who then can basically handle the fulfillment. There are so many different ways of of getting the guests in the hotel room. We've been talking about mobile key for years now. Some hotels are more successful in implementing it than others. We all know that the cost of implementing mobile key comes with replacing all your door locks in many hotels, which often makes it very difficult. But you know, you can also do mobile check-in by creating a small area where the guests can pick up the key. You can use a self-service component where basically a simple device can be used for the guests to pick up the key and create their own key at that point in time. So there's many different ways of interacting with the guests and providing the guests the ability to get in and out of the hotel. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Enhancing the journey in the house, I think you know that's probably something where, where Valerie and Trust You will talk a bit more about. But um, I think texting and interacting through messaging is is a thing that you know you really have to make sure you put in place. And I've I've talked to many hotels about this. Some of the hotels say, well, you know, it creates a lot of extra work for us because we have people expected to be responded to right away. And yes, they do. But on the other hand, it also creates a new new service component. And I saw earlier in the in the survey that you know. 44% uh, of the people were thinking that uh, training would be a big impact uh, when you implement new technologies. And I think that's definitely, that's a very good and valid point that you have to do a lot of retraining and a lot of operational changes. I think it's time for hotels to relook at some of the operations and see how they can embrace some of these technologies available to them and the technology that guests want to use uh, to enhance that in-house experience. Um, you know, you can you can really offer great services with a simple texting solution. They're not very expensive to implement, but you do have to think through the process of uh, you know operationally. How do I implement it, and how do I make sure that when the text gets to the front desk, and somebody responds to that? Do I dedicate people to that? Do they have a process for that? There, you got to think those three. But once you think those things through, then you can really allow guests that want to be dealt with in that way in format, which probably I would be one of them, but many other ones would be too, uh, to allow for room service, to allow for housekeeping requests, make it personable. Uh, a lot of these uh, in texting systems have some of the automation in place as well. Some of these messages are responded to automatically. But all in all, providing in-house service through texting as well as in person, I think is very, very important going forward. Next slide. 
streamlining the guest departure and checkout is the other part. As I mentioned, check-in and check-out are those two areas where you have the most interaction with the guests, although check-out, you know, most of the time is not being done by guests. Um, and that, as we all know, creates a bit of operational difficulties because that now we don't know if the guest is still there or has left. And I would like to say that, you know, again, bringing in mobile connectivity to the guest, allowing the guest to check out from their smartphone, makes a huge different, uh, huge difference. Because I think you'll you'll notice that all of a sudden guests will start checking out. We've seen that uh, hotels that use our checkout solution, they have a, about a 30 to 40 percent conversion rate of people actually checking out. Now, probably those 30 to 40 percent of the people would not have checked out. Otherwise, they would have just left. They would have called back later for a folio or an invoice or whatever they needed. And now all of that gets automated. But I think the biggest thing about offering mobile checkout is that people, again, they can be in control. They can say, okay, I'm going to check out now or I'm going to buy some late checkout and stay a little longer. You make some more money. They get some more convenience. Um, all these things come into play. But the fact that people actually are starting to check out again on a mobile device because, you know, I'm, I'm driving in my taxi on the way to the airport anyway, so I might as well click that button. got nothing else to do. I'm sitting looking at the phone constantly anyway, so let's do that. The fact that people like TR checking out helps you as a hotelier also in the back-end organization with getting that room to housekeeping, getting that room clean, and allow the next guest to do buy an early check-in for that same room before you even know that that has happened. So again, it's all about control. When you provide mobile solutions or you provide self-service solutions in the lobby, you enhance the guest experience for those that want to that have an appetite to those solutions. And again, it's not about one for all. It's not I do mobile check-in or I don't do mobile check-in. It's really about trying to offer a choice of service to those guests that are, you know, want any of those types of service. Next slide. So the benefits of increased, increased guest satisfaction, I think they're all obvious to most of us, I would imagine. You know, we've seen uh, with some of our hotels and a 10 point increase in the GEM scores. Uh, it's known through Cornell that, you know, if you provide better service, you can, uh, for every point in your gem or in your TripAdvisor, you can expect a 10% increase in ADR. All scientifically researched that's being done by Cornell and proven to be true. You get repeat guests, and guests will also spread out the good work. If you look at TripAdvisor and you see some of these different check-in components happening in certain hotels, um, there's good words about it. You know, it says, you know, it's nice to do a mobile check-in. It's nice to do my own, my own check-in. It's nice to be able to pick up a key without having to wait in line for it. All these things play, come into play for you as a hotelier to get the next guest customer to come into your hotel uh, for, for his or her next trip. Next slide. All right, Yas, thank you so much for that presentation. Uh, again, speaking to the importance of uh, implementing more mobile options and mobile touch points within your hotel and allowing your guests to have uh, that control that they so badly want. And they get it in their everyday lives as well. So with that said, I want to uh, reiterate to our audience that you can now send in any questions or comments and we will get to that uh, at the end of the presentation. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Valerie Castillo, the correlation between messaging and guest satisfaction. Thank you, Free. Um, thank you for having us here. I'm very excited to present this information for all of you today. Um, the information that I'm providing is actually based on a recent study um, that Trust You uh, just put out um, to the industry, and um, we'll be presenting some of the key findings. Uh, one of the most interesting being the correlation that we found between messaging your guests while they're on site and their guest satisfaction levels. So you can go ahead and go to the next slide. So to start, I wanted to talk about the traveler journey. So a lot of TrustU's recent research centers around this concept um, as we're hoping to identify how hotels can enhance the guest experience through each stage of that journey. So we identify that once you've convinced the traveler to book your hotel, they have already become your guest. And the active decision to book the hotel either directly through your hotel website or through an OTA it opens up the lines of communication between your hotel and the guest that's about to stay with you. And it then becomes your responsibility as a hotel to retain the guest and exceed their expectations right from that booking point. So if we go to the next slide. 
So we'll talk about some guest expectations here. So while it may seem obvious, guests expect that once they make their booking, the hotel is going to follow up with more information. So you see here in that title that 80% of the guests that, that we had respond to our survey said that they do expect that the hotels reach out. So here you see a breakdown of the most popular information travelers expect to receive from a hotel. However, you can see that there are also noticeable gaps between what information could be sent to guests and what information is being sent to guests. Um, and there are a lot of implications that you can make from this. So for example, how does my communication strategy compare to other hotels? What other information could we add um, to the communication mix? And even how can you inspire your guests post-booking um, and pre-stay, so even before they get to your hotel? So we go to the next slide. After our study was published, um, T News actually wrote an interesting article as a follow-up. And their article begs the question, are hotels and OTAs failing to inspire guests? So although it's a strong statement, and um, uh, perhaps hotels can better reach out to their guests post-booking and pre-stay to really get more out of that hotel guest relationship. So for example, here they noted in their article that it's the perfect way that, you know, once they've booked with your hotel to start upselling and increasing your ancillary revenues right from the very start. So if we go to the next slide, when it comes down to it, hotels should be should be providing all of the necessary information after the booking and also need to be able to engage with guests when they have additional questions throughout their pre-stay, on-site, and post-stay journey. Um, and these are the three methods of communication that guests prefer. It is very notable, I think, that travelers are very likely to visit your hotel's website prior to their stay, um, probably to get, for, get more information, maybe to see if you have a pool and maybe to get some pictures so that they you know, really have a good sense of, of where they're going to be staying. So being mobily optimized, obviously, is an extremely important concept that we're always bringing up um, from a technology standpoint. Um, I saw recently an article that hotel websites are looking to incorporate a web chat widget. So either with, you know, um, live chat, so actually a person that you would be able to communicate with or perhaps a chat bot as well. So it'll be interesting to see if this becomes more popular over the next few months and years um, on hotel websites so that the hotels can engage with the guests even prior to them staying. And, you know, as you can see from our research, it does indicate that that might be a worthwhile investment for a hotel. So we'll go to the next slide. So we'll dig into this a little bit more. So, you know, guests, obviously, they like email. They like, you know, going to your hotel website. They like messaging, um, you know, but we really did give them all of the possible um, um, communication methods and, you know, kind of let them, let them tell us what they preferred. Um, and we saw that 73% 73 of guests prefer to communicate digitally with the hotels. So while they might still revert to a phone call, you can see that you know, more than half of our studies participants indicated that they use this method. Um, many of them are switching over to the digital channels of email, text messaging, and social media. And in fact, 68% of our participants outright state that they prefer written electronic communication over phone calls mediators or in-person methods of, of contact. So if we go to the next slide, these preferences um, are especially interesting when you see how they correlate to overall guest satisfaction levels. So yes, these respondents have said that they prefer these methods, but does it actually make a difference? Does it make an impact for the hotel? Um, you know, because uh, it, it does take some, some operational shifting to make sure that you can communicate with your guests this way. So, we saw that for guests who used messaging and or social media with their hotel, that they reported great levels of satisfaction. You see 4.5 was kind of the median average out of five, um, which on our scale is an excellent rating for a hotel. So therefore, hoteliers really do have the opportunity to increase guest satisfaction by incorporating social and messaging solutions when they're communicating with their guests on site. So, you know, there's really no other way to put it. I think messaging is a mega trend that's affecting our industry. Again, whether that's via a live chat on your website, um, via email, which we've been using now for years, and now kind of going into messaging. So just to review quickly some of the previous stats that we've already showed, 
Um, there's not only a demand for hotels to communicate with guests via messaging services, but many have already implemented these services, which is great. So some of the travelers that had responded to our study um, were already saying that they've communicated with hotels in this way. And the demand for messaging also outweighs that for a hotel and, um, and booking apps. So um, keeping the solution simple really is the best way to go. You'll see in the next slide, we kind of have a breakdown um, of, of this trend. So there is a trend to offer messaging services on a hotel's website and within a mobile app, and those are absolutely necessary um, methods of communication for a hotel to really, again, be part of every stage of that traveler's journey. Um, so according to guests' previous experience with hotel guest communication, using SMS and Facebook Messenger are definitely gaining popularity. And I think this is likely because there um, is no additional effort on their side. These are apps that they're probably using every day, probably taking up the, the most data and the most time away from their batteries is you know, texting their friends and uh, searching on Facebook. So they're already using these apps. They already have them open. So um, you're much more likely to get responses if you're using these methods as a hotel to communicate with your guests. So just to quickly review, you know, guest messaging solutions, they have a lot of great benefits, um, but, you know, kind of most notably are these, these that I have here. Um, so one, sending personalized communication to guests, so emphasis on personalized, um, you know, as email spam is really becoming more popular, I think emails are becoming less and less uh, personal to, to a guest. So, you know, they might have, um, you know, a few indicators that are personalized, like their name and, and all of their check-in dates. But outside of that, you know, really how personal can you get via an email? Um, however, a text message or a reply through a Facebook message, you know, can really feel more like a personalized approach to communication because it's how they're communicating with their friends and family. Um, second, they can benefit from real-time service recovery. So too often, hotels are finding out about a problem after the guest checks out in their you know, post-day survey. So they're asking their guests how it was, and their guests are finally telling them that you know, it wasn't, the service level wasn't up to par. Um, so opening the lines of communication prior to their stay and when they're on site, so right away, can ensure that if problems arise, they're more likely to let you know about it because there's an easy way to get in contact with you. And then next, uh, collect pre-stay surveys to upgrade the hotel check-in. So I use the word upgrade really in two ways here. So we can uh, make the check-in experience easier and upgrade that check-in experience with a pre-stay survey because um, you know, that will make all of the, the check-in processes a little bit easier. If you've already filled out that survey prior to getting there, then you can get to your hotel much quicker. Um, and then also you can offer upgrades to the hotel guests as well. So this can also help you bring in more revenue for your hotel if in the pre-stay survey, you know, you're asking them if they'd like to upgrade their room, if they prefer late checkout, um, kind of get all of those preferences from the beginning so that your hotel staff, you know, doesn't have to take that time when they're checking in um, a guest and they kind of see a line behind them, you know, we're, we're more proactively able to, as a hotel, offer these upgrades and services. And then next, creating convenience between guest and staff. So I think Yas, you know, kind of talked about this when he said he was talking to that hotel in Naples that had implemented messaging at their hotel. And of course, you know, operations have to change. But I often get the question from hotels about whether they think automating guest communication will bombard them with requests. But oftentimes, guest messaging can actually do the opposite thing. So for one, hotels can better address issues from one centralized place and address them more efficiently than they would if they needed to call around a hotel and you know, try to reach a staff member to get some help. Um, and then additionally, with outreach messages, so being more proactive instead of reactive, hotels can actually prevent frequently asked questions from coming in um, to their front desk or you know, via the phone or concierge um, by addressing those directly with their guests via text or email. And then finally, as our, um, as our study so adequately showed, our, um, is the correlation between guest messaging and improved guest satisfaction, which, again, Yas um, put together some great bullet points about, you know, why it is so important for guest satisfaction and the benefits of that, um, you know, definitely have to do with uh, your online reputation, which, of course, is very important, and then also driving revenue at your hotel. 
So last slide, I just wanted to uh, quickly talk about um, the study that we did unveil. Um, you can find it on our website at trustyou.com and you can learn more about these correlations between guest messaging and, um, and how you can better communicate with your hotel guests to meet their expectations. Awesome, thank you so much, Valerie. And I think your point about reaching guests where they are, which is typically on their phone, messaging is the most effective way to really um, be able to keep that level of engagement and thus improve the guest, um, you know, the level of guest satisfaction. So I'm sure that the study is a, um, a very good indication and a reflection of what's really happening in the industry. And we will include the study in our follow-up email for anyone who wants to download it. Uh, that being said, let me turn it over to Stuart Butler. Uh, he's going to talk about increasing your hotel ratings while driving more revenue. Um, and it's now a reality due to real-time one-to-one communication with your guests. Stuart? Thanks very much, Free. Uh, thank you for having us here today. Uh, this has been some great information so far from Yoss and Valerie. I've, I've learned a lot and hopefully you guys at home have too. It is always a risk going third in a webinar like this that's an hour long because usually you are crunch the time at the end. But I'm glad to say that we are on schedule. So let's keep, keep it that way so we have some time for questions at the end. So first of all, like Free just said, you know, we are living in an unprecedented era because now through mobile, we have this very unique opportunity to communicate one-to-one -one with guests that we've never ever had before. And as Valerie indicated, guests not only expect it, but when we actually do in engage with the guest during the stay or prior to the stay, we actually see that their satisfaction goes up. So it's really a win-win for us as hoteliers. And I will say that you know over the last five years or so, we've seen this merging between operations and marketing in the hotel industry as it relates to rate management. I believe that we're gonna see the similar co uh, collaboration between those two typically disparate groups from a messaging standpoint, because messaging not only has a massive effect on satisfaction, but also we see that it can have a massive effect on the bottom line as well and revenue generated. So one of the studies that was put out by Harvard found that guests that are satisfied spend 140% more during their stay on property. So we already know that guests that we engage with are more satisfied. So we can make that jump to say that guests that we engage with also are very much more likely to spend more money with us. So that's really an exciting prospect because the guest actually wants to do knew that. They're happy to do that. And we as a hotelier can overcome some of the burdens that we've been faced with over the last several years as OTAs have kind of squashed out our profit margins. This opens up unprecedented new opportunities for revenue. Next slide, please. So when you're thinking about engaging with your guest, there's a couple of considerations that we like to point out to our hotel clients. First of which is timing. So you really want to think about where that guest is in the journey. And I agree 100% with Valerie and trust you when they say that the stay really does begin at the point of booking. That's when the guest starts to anticipate uh, their trip to your property and you really can help enhance that anticipation phase. So what you're sending at that point is always different than what you should be sending at check-in or at the beginning of the stay versus mid-stay versus towards the end of the stay and then on to post-stay. So always think about when is the guest likely to receive this message and then think about the method. So how, how are they going to receive it? And we saw earlier that there's a lot of expectations in terms of uh, whether they want personalized messages on their mobile device or they want email or they want to receive it via a chat from the website, etc. What do you think about what access this guest is going to have to the specific method at a specific time? So, for example, sending an email 
to check in with the guests during the stay to see how the stay is, what their experience is like, and if you can help them. Sending an email is probably not the most prudent thing to do because oftentimes on vacation, people are not tied to their email. They're not going to be checking that. But sending an SMS or a push notification during the stay is going to be a lot more effective. And then on the flip side, before the stay, if you're sending a push notification or an SMS message, that might be perceived as a little too intrusive. So you might want to stick to things like email at that point. So really think about the timing as it correlates to the method that you're going to be communicating. And then finally, think about the objective. Don't ever interfere with the guest or um, communicate with the guest unnecessarily. You don't want to alienate them. So really think about what, what are you trying to do with each specific message. Either you're adding value to the guest or you're adding so much value to the hotel that you're okay risking the potential of alienating the guest in this case. So some examples of that might be communicating to reduce friction, you know, letting them know things ahead of time. Uh, could be during the stay, it could be enhancing the experience, letting them know what's going on, things like that. So really be conscious and mindful when you're developing a messaging engagement plan on those three things, the timing, the method, and then what the, the goal is, the objective is for each and every single message and to each and every guest. Next slide, please. So this is something that most people do pretty well is the pre-arrival communication. And we kind of break it up into multiple types of communication. We've done extensive testing here at Fuel with our booking engine clients in terms of how many times you can communicate before the stay. And really there is not a magic number, but we've certainly found that you can definitely communicate more than once or twice prior to stay, depending on what that booking window is. But some typical messages that we like to send and a lot of times this is via email, but it can also be via push notification or SMS, depending on the situation, the relationship with the guest. But for the context of this conversation, let's stick to email. So obviously confirmation email is something that everyone expects to receive. And, and in fact, if they don't, they want it, they're going to contact the property directly and ask where it is. So we want to send confirmations. But we also want to share in the anticipation and the excitement that the guest has. So making sure that you are telling them that you're excited that they're coming and maybe even offering things like countdowns or here's the stuff you're going to expect when you get there. That can really enhance their anticipation and then therefore their experience when they get to the property. Sending them notifications and educating them to reduce friction is also very, very popular with a lot of our clients because it, it streamlines the operational side. So for example, if you're telling people what the check-in process is or where the parking is, things like that, then these people that now are proactively being told what's going on, they don't have to communicate with the property themselves. They don't have to pick up the phone and call and take up your reservationists or your staff members' time. So that's really handy. Third is gathering information. So this could be information related to the stay itself. So something like a uh, license plate number or the people staying in the room, you could do that ahead of time so they don't have to fill out a registration card if you require one. Uh, but it also can be insight that you can gain for future marketing. So why finding out why they're coming to stay, you know, what are the, what brings them to town? Is it a specific event? Because if it is a specific event, then I can use that for marketing next year when I'm trying to put more heads in beds during that same period of time. So I can start say sending triggered um, filtered emails to that specific group of people that stayed at this specific festival last year and I can start sending that maybe 90 days before the festival the following year. So you can really gain some good data by engaging with your guests prior to the stay. And then finally, and this is one that really I don't see utilized as much as it should be, but there's an opportunity for promotions in upselling. And, and you also touched on this a little bit, but things like room upgrades. You know, there, there's a lot of people, they've already spent the money, they're already coming to the property in their mind. Um, that money's gone. So if you start saying instead of the oceanfront view was uh, $500, but the ocean uh, ocean view um, room was only $400, it's only $100 difference. But when they're going to book, they're seeing the big $500 sticker. So they may have opted for the $400. But now they've spent the $400. You can come back and say for an extra only $100, 
you can upgrade to this experience. And you're gonna get a lot more conversions than you would expect doing that kind of thing. But you can also promote things on property that they can experience while they're there. So things like discounts to the restaurant or the bar or um, letting them know that there is a spa and giving them some kind of offer uh, to get into the spa. So anything you're monetizing on property, you should be communicating before the state. One, let them know that it exists, but maybe also merchandising a little bit to incentivize them to go. Next slide, please. So one of the great things in the world we live in today is that people are accessible. And when I say accessible, I mean they can be addressed on a one-to-one -one level like we talked about a minute ago. Harvard did a study that found out that people on average unlock their mobile device 150 times per day, which blows my mind. And when I first read that stat, I was like, there is no way. So I started tallying it up. Every time I picked up my phone and unlocked the screen, I would jot down. And, and I was pretty close. I was about 120 uh, times a day when I measured that over the course of the week. So uh, average is 150 times a day. So we can get in front of people during the stay like never before. Previously, to communicate with them, they either had to come to the front desk or maybe we could do a check-in uh, phone call once they were in the property just to make sure everything was to their satisfaction. But now with their mobile device in their pocket 24-7 that they're looking at 150 times a day, if they give us permission, we can communicate with them. But the key is to make sure that we're providing value. Next slide, please. So we have a product here at Fuel called Guest Express Mobile App, and I wasn't sure when we launched this product how effective it would be. We've got this in dozens of hotels now, independent hotels, and what we're seeing from our data is that guests are indeed using the app. They're opening it on average 9.8 times during their stay, and on average 55.6% of them that download the app are actually using it to do the mobile check-in. Now, so back to Yoss's point at the beginning, people want a choice. Not everyone wants mobile check-in, but a lot, a lot of people do. So I'm gonna kind of focus on some of the additional communication that we're currently doing and what's effective on mobile apps specifically for a lot of our clients. Next slide, please. So during state communication, which is unpre unprecedented in the industry, is something we haven't really been able to do, but now we can with mobile messaging. And this could be SMS, it could be push notifications. It really depends on your specific clientele and your specific operational setup. But here are some of the things that we're sending that are working really well. First of all, just a simple welcome push notification once they've checked in. Once the P And this can be automated, so once this PMS indicates that that room has been checked in, we can push a notification to the guest that says, welcome to the property, and maybe gives them a little bit more information about what's going on or what to anticipate. Um, and then you can also solicit feedback by telling them, let us know if you need anything at all, and giving them the conduits of communication by which they can reach you most effectively. You know, invite them to come visit the, de the front desk at any point, or to send you an SMS message, or to communicate via the app itself. So give them that choice so that if they run into a problem during the stay, that there is an opportunity for them to resolve the issue through you versus just getting frustrated and going to social media or going to TripAdvisor and places like that and leaving negative sentiment. So the next type of push notification is events. So this can be really powerful, but can also be really easy for you to manage. So if you know that every Wednesday night you have a band by the pool or that you have a kid's activity with a movie, you can set that up to be triggered to everyone that's currently in-house every single Wednesday afternoon at maybe an hour before the event and say, hey, wanted to let you know that this event is going on and this is what, what it is, you're gonna see that not only does that increase the experience of the guest, but it also gets more people to participate in on-site on -site activities and on-site amenities. We also tend to do what we call a pre-departure sentiment check. So assuming that a guest hasn't reached out to us with a problem, but potentially did run into some kind of problem, we want them to be able to feel comfortable reaching back out to us. So giving them a push notification that specifically asks them, how has your stay been? It could be a one question, for one to five star response. And if you get anything below a four, then you can 
act on that and try to resolve the issue before they leave. This is something that's really helped our properties that we manage increase their online reputation significantly. And then finally, revenue generation. And I'm gonna dig into that a little more because to me, that's the biggest opportunity. Next slide, please. So here are the top four opportunities during the stay for revenue generation that we found actually work for our independent hotels that we manage. Next slide, please. So first up is room service and add-ons. And what we found that if you offer room service via a mobile app, you typically see about a 19% increase in the number of orders and the revenue being generated from room service. So this doesn't necessarily have to be just during the stay. You could be communicating, engaging the guests prior to the stay with things like, would you like the romance package? It includes champagne and chocolates, could be stuff like that. But there's a huge opportunity for add-ons. And if you make it convenient for the guest, you know, you don't make them have to go find a book somewhere in the room and then pick up the phone and call someone, which a lot of people today just don't like interacting with people. Uh, give them the opportunity via a mobile app experience or, or maybe even a tablet in the room that you provided them. But we definitely see that you can generate significantly more revenue through add-ons and room service if it's more frictionless and more available to them. Next slide, please. On-site amenities. So one of the things we found is that a lot of hotels have patterns in terms of if they have an on-site restaurant or spa, they tend to know and anticipate when the quiet times are going to be. Say every Tuesday from 11 till 4, we know that the spa is just empty. So we can start to utilize that knowledge and manipulate the guests to coming at the times we want them to, which are traditionally low demand, without cannibalizing existing business, and now we can generate more revenue. So what we found is that 83% of guests do actually want to receive promotions while they're on property. So if you send them, if you do have a slow time in the spa or the restaurant, then you can automatically set up a trigger message that every Tuesday at 10 o'clock that says the next five people that respond to this message will get X discount in the bar, or they'll get a free appetizer with their entree at the restaurant, or they'll get this included with this package of spa treatment. So again, this is about merchandising, and again, why operations and marketing needs to start working together. Number three, please. Attractions and show tickets. So what we found is 77% of tourists plan their trip activities when they're actually already on property. So this is a great opportunity for you to help them make decisions. You know the area better than most people because you're in the area. So you can start partnering with local shows, local attractions, and start to merchandise their tickets through the mobile app, through push notifications, and let people know what's going on. Give them a planner activ an activity planner within the app and allow them to actually book tickets. This opens up brand new revenue streams that you've never seen before. And number four, and probably my favorite, this is the, the, the one I like the most because it's really helping drive more room revenue and it's eliminating, in some cases, distressed inventory or the inventory that's going to disappear and you're probably not going to sell last minute. So in a study that we recently did, 61% of travelers indicated that they would purchase a mobile checkout if it was available via a mobile app. And these are people that are visiting independent properties, not flagged properties. So it is a reality in the world we live in. So again, thinking about back to timing and context that we talked about earlier, when is the appropriate time to send those late checkout? It's probably not at um, check-in. It's probably midway through the stay, and it probably depends a little bit on the length of the stay and who the demographic is. But what we tend to do is the day before checkout will automatically trigger um, a push notification. We'll check the inventory for the next day on the property, and if the next day is actually available, we'll start by saying, have an extended stay, here's the price. It can be a deeply discounted price. If they don't respond well to that, then we can then offer them a late checkout. Now, we're doing this in real time and we're checking the PMS to make sure the inventory is available or housekeeping is going to be able to manage the situation. We can limit inventory, things like that. But what we're seeing is we're driving additional room revenue just by asking guests. A lot of guests, if they're having a positive experience, they do want to stay an extra few hours, especially if you have great amenities, or in some cases, we're even seeing that they do want to stay an extra night or two. 
So this is a phenomenal opportunity. Next slide, please. And then after the stay, don't forget that the guest in their mind is still reliving the experience. So don't forget to engage them still. Thank them and more importantly, try to get them to share the experience with you. Get them to submit photos or thoughts or reviews because um, then you can use that for marketing, you can promote it to other guests, potential guests as well. And you can also use that information that they provide with that same guest again next year. So if you start sending an email 30 days before the time they booked the previous year, the following year, then you could include the photos that they submitted to rekindle those memories and engage them again and get them to be more likely to stay again. And then finally, if you want to hear more data, um, you can go to the next slide, please, free. If you want to hear more data from Fuel, from some of our studies or how this is working for our clients, you can check us out at fueltravel.com slash podcast. We uh, publish a new episode every week and it's packed with tips and tricks for hotel marketing. Thank you so much for your presentation, uh, Stuart. We are running short on time, so I want to get to a couple of questions. I'm going to skip the last discussion point, um, but we'll start off with you, Yas. Uh, the first question is, is the idea of pushing up sales and upgrades done through automation, or is that triggered by the front desk staff? Uh, it can be done in both ways. Um, I mean, I think there's various applications out there that have various ways of doing it. Uh, the way we provide it uh, is in our back end, you can set up daily offers that based on availability, based on room type previously selected or booked, uh, present upgrade offers to the guest. Or if he arrives early, it presents it based on time to the guest. All of that is kind of uh, user definable in hotel administration area. So it's basically set it and forget it. Um, probably check it a few times a week to kind of alter the offerings. But in general, it's done automated. So front desk agents don't have to get involved in the process of it. All right, awesome. Uh, this one's for you, Valerie. Is there a high response rate from guests if we communicate via text message versus email? Yeah, so I think one of the most interesting things that I've seen is um, is the open rate, actually. Um, so with email, you know, we're seeing open rates, you know, probably a good email open rate from a marketer's perspective is 20 to 30 percent, but open rates on text message are over 90 percent. So just in terms of the amount of reach of people actually seeing your message is going to be so much higher. And then in turn, of course, those response rates will be higher as well. Um, so I think that is one of the key things that we're talking to hoteliers about right now when it comes to messaging is um, as, a, as a major added benefit. And this one is for you, Stuart. Uh, an app is a great tool to communicate with your guests. As an individual hotel, it's not easy to create and manage the app. Do you have any alternative communication instead of developing your own app? I mean, there's a lot of options out there. A lot of PMSs now have their own um, tools that they've created. There's a lot of third-party products out there as well. I definitely don't recommend you go and invest the thousands and thousands of dollars it could could cost to develop your own solution when there's so many great products out there. Uh, from an operational standpoint, the, the best thing is, like Yoss just touched on, a lot of the communication can be automated. It doesn't have to be manual. So you can set up triggers based on data in the PMS, based on events and timing, things like that. And it can really appear to be personalized to the guest and feel personalized to the guest, but really it's all set up, set it and forget it in a way. All right. All right. Uh, we will get to the rest of the questions via email. Uh, and if you have any additional questions or comments, please feel free to send them in to info at stayintouch.com. We will be sure to answer those. Um, I want to thank our panel today. You guys did a great job, uh, great insight. I'm sure our audience took um, some, some key points and some very good advice away from this webinar. I also want to thank our audience for joining us and sticking with us the whole way through. Um, Again, please send any additional questions or comments to info at stayintouch.com and you will receive the recording for this presentation within 24 hours. So look out for that follow-up email. Thank you guys again. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.